All right, in, in today's uh, class on Aesop's fables, we're going to study the third fable. So let's let's get some uh, <laughs> let's get our notes ready. I have my timer started. <laughs> so let's let's prepare our notes. <laughs> At the top of your page for your notes, write your name, full name, first name and last name, and write today's date, March. 30th, 2022. Title of the course is Aesop's Fables. Aesop's Fables. <clears throat> and the title of this lesson, you could write lesson three, or you could write the title of the, uh, the fable, or you could write both. It's probably best to write both. Let's write lesson three. Lesson three, and the title of the fable is The Lion Hunting with Other Beasts. The Lion Hunting with Other Beasts, that's the title of the third fable. And the fable we're going to study in this lesson. Now, for your notes, uh, we always do the same things when we study Aesop's fables. The first thing we want to do is we want to study the fable. We want to read it carefully. We want to learn every detail. And then we want to write a paraphrase of the fable. We want to write a summary of the fable. Okay? So... Let me just, don't write this down. I'm just going to tell you what we need to do. The first thing we need to do is read the fable. And we'll do that together. Read the fable. The second thing we're going to do after we've read the fable, and make sure you pay attention to every detail of the fable. The details matter. We want to write a paraphrase. Paraphrase the fable. <clears throat> the paraphrase is just an exercise where you're asked to retell the fable in your own words to prove that you understand it, to prove that you know all the details. <clears throat> the third thing we want to do when we study the fables is we want to identify the moral lesson. We want to answer the question, what is the moral lesson of this fable? Or what are some moral lessons of the fable? Because there can be many. There can be many different moral lessons in a fable. The fourth question we want to ask is, why did, Ar uh, why did Aesop... Why do we think Aesop used the characters to teach... The moral lessons. Why did Aesop choose these characters to teach the lesson? And then fifth, anytime we study a fable, we want to ask, how does this apply to my life? How does this moral, how does this fable apply to my life? How can I use this fable? to make good decisions, to avoid bad decisions, to become a better person. All right, so every time we study a fable, we want to do the same things. And in your notes, <clears throat> this is why I'm telling you this, in your notes, you want to make sure you have this information in your notes. If you want credit for your notes for your lesson, you need to make sure you've done all of these things. You've paid attention to the reading of the fable. You're able to express the fable in your own words because you're going to summarize it at the end. <clears throat> you're able to identify the moral of the fable. You're able to explain or make a good explanation for why Aesop chose the characters that he did to tell this story. And then to show that you're thinking about the fable 
reflecting on the fable, you can talk about how it applies to your life or how it might apply to your life. Okay? <clears throat> so that's what we want to make sure we do every time we study one of Aesop's fables. <clears throat> so what have we studied so far in this class? Let's jot this down in our notes. This is our third fable. The first fable was the fable of the two frogs. We learned the moral of the story was to be careful before you make decisions, right? Look before you leap. And then in the second fable, it was the fable of Jupiter and the camel. And we learned the danger of complaining about your life without thinking. All right, that was the second fable we studied. And in this third fable, we're going to study the lion hunting with the other beasts. And before we get started, let's just think a little bit about the characters. <clears throat> the lion hunting with other beasts. What do we know about a lion? Remember, lions were talked about in, in the second fable, we talked about lions. Remember that the camel was complaining because he wasn't like a lion. Remember that? So what do we know about lions? King of the, the king of the beasts, right? We say that they're the king of all animals. Or at least they're the king of all, all uh, irrational animals. Man is the king of the animals. But lions are the king of the jungle, the king of all of the wild beasts, lions. What makes them the king? They're, they're the strongest bravest, they're fearless, right? They're, they're strong, animals. they're brave, what? They're feared, by all animals. they're feared by all animals. And why are they feared by all animals? Because they can kill all animals, right? They're the most deadly of all animals. If a lion and a tiger have a fight, who wins? I don't think a tiger wins that fight. Hmm? Otherwise, a tiger would be the king of the jungle. All right? <clears throat> so lions are considered the king of the jungle. They're the strongest. They're the bravest. They're the most feared animal in the world. Okay? If you watch a nature movie about lions, what do the lions do? They just kill stuff, right? They chase down other animals, kill them and tear them apart and eat them. They're the most terrible animals in the world, okay? So <clears throat> when we look at the title and we see it doesn't say the lion hunting other beasts, right? It says the lion hunting with other beasts. We know that those other beasts are not as strong as the lion. They're not as terrifying as the lion. And so it's good to, to think about the characters like this to prepare to study the fable. Okay? We know what's important about a lion. So now let's, now let's read the fable. Okay? This is Aesop's fable of the lion hunting with other beasts. Aesop tells us this fable. A lion, so we're told that four animals went hunting together, okay? A lion, a heifer, a goat, and a sheep. Let's just make sure we know what these animals are. A lion, a heifer. What in the world is a heifer? A female cow, right? It's a, well, all cows are females, all right? So it's a young cow, a young, and I'll just write female just to make sure that that's clear. A young female cow on the farm, and I don't know if, if, if Aesop or if this translation really means everything that we mean, but on the farm, when we talk about a heifer, we mean a cow that hasn't had 
a calf yet. Okay? When a cow has a calf, we just call it a cow. Heifer is a young cow that hasn't had a calf yet. So a young cow. Young female cow is a heifer. A heifer, a goat, and a sheep. What do heifers eat? Grass. Grass. What do goats eat? Grass, Grass yeah. leaves. They, they kind of eat, right? They eat weeds, leaves, branches, some grass. What do sheep eat? Grass, clover, right? Soft, soft grasses, okay? All of these animals eat grass or eat plants. So the first thing we have to think about as we get started with this fable is, what in the world are heifer, goat, and sheep doing hunting with a lion, right? No, I'm not, I'm not really asking for you to answer. But we can see that something is weird, right? What are these animals doing out hunting with a lion? So let's go back to the fable. A lion... A heifer, a goat, and a sheep once agreed to share whatever each might catch in hunting. A fine, fat stag. What is a stag? Any kind of deer? What kind of deer? A male deer, right? Okay. So a big, fat, juicy deer fell into a snare, a trap that was set by the goat. So the goat didn't chase down the deer, didn't attack him or tackle him, wrestle him down to the ground. The goat set a trap and the trap caught the stag. So the goat remembered the agreement that they made, and he called the other animals together. It says, the goat thereupon called the rest together. The lion showed up, and he divided the stag into four parts. One, two, three, four. So the lion kept his part of the agreement, right? Anything we catch, we're going to divide evenly or fairly among us. Okay? So the lion, keeping his agreement, divided the stag into four parts. Taking the best piece for himself, he said, This is mine. This is the best piece. This is mine. Because I'm the lion. I'm the best animal. Therefore, this piece is mine. I'll take the best piece. That's fair, right? And you can imagine the other animals might say, Yeah, okay, that's fair. You're the best animal. Right? So the lion took the best piece for himself and he said, This is mine, of course, as I am the lion. But then he took another portion. And he said, this too is mine, by right, the right, if you must know, of the strongest. So we'll give the first piece to the best animal, we'll give the second piece to the strongest animal, that's fair, right? Second best piece goes to the strongest animal, oh, that's me, the lion takes the second piece. Taking another portion, or I'm, I'm sorry, going on further, he says, further, putting aside the third piece, he says, this piece is for the most valiant. So we'll take this third piece, that's for the most valiant of us. And as for the remaining part, touch it if you dare. 
And so this is the fable of the lion hunting with the other beasts. All right, so Aesop tells us this story. Right from the beginning, we know that something is wrong because a heifer, a goat, and a sheep have no business hunting, right? What would they do with the animal anyway? Sell it for money? They're not going to eat it. The goat's not going to sit down and eat deer meat. So the characters are chosen by Aesop. The lion is chosen. We know why the lion is chosen. The fable tells us, right? The fable tells us, I'm the lion. I'm the strongest. I'm the most valiant. We see why Aesop chose the lion. Okay? But why did Aesop cho choose a heifer, a goat, and a sheep? Because they don't eat meat. Right? Because they don't hunt. Even though the goat caught the deer, these are not hunters. They're grass-eating plant-eating animals. They have no way of defending themselves against a lion. And in the end, the lion takes all of the meat and he says, touch it if you dare. What are you going to do about it? Right? <clears throat> so, we can see why Aesop chose these characters. Now, what is the moral lesson of this story. What's the moral lesson of this story? You should be taking notes. What's the moral lesson of this story? Well, we should think of this fable as a warning to the heifers, the, uh, the goats, and the sheep, right? This fable is a warning. The moral lesson of this fable is be careful who you make agreements with. The moral of this fable, the very clear moral, if we think about the heifer or the goat, the goat caught the deer. The goat caught the deer. The goat could have argued and said, how about a piece for the smartest? I set the trap. Right? And the lion just says, bah. Right? So when we talk about the moral of this fable, the moral of this fable is be careful. Be careful who you make agreements with. careful with whom you make agreements. This was a pretty good agreement, wasn't it? This was a good agreement. Let's all work together. And if we succeed in our work, we'll share the rewards, right? That's a good agreement. Let's all work together and we'll share the rewards. So the agreement isn't necessarily bad. It's a good agreement. It's a fair agreement. But there's a couple things wrong with it. And the important part is to be careful with whom you make an agreement. You can make an agreement. You can even sign a contract. But what's the problem? How are you going to make other people keep the agreement? If you have no way to keep, if you have no way to make the other people keep the agreement, what good is the agreement going to be? Right? Be careful with whom you make an agreement. If you have no way if you have no way to make the other person or the other people keep the agreement, what good is an agreement?
Be careful with whom you make an agreement. You should make sure that the person that you make an agreement with is honest, trustworthy. All right, secondly, what did the lion do? The lion could probably argue that he did keep the agreement, right? We said that we were going to divide the catch. The, the lion, the heifer, the goat, and the sheep agreed to share what they might catch. Did they, uh, did they explain how they would share it? No. Okay? So the second moral lesson is be careful when you make an agreement to add all the details when making an agreement. Be careful to, make, to add all the details. If you don't add all the details in the agreement, you leave the agreement open to interpretation. Do you know what that means? Open to interpretation means that people can decide how they want to read the agreement. The lion could say, we didn't say how it was to be divided. We only said that it was to be divided. And so the lion's interpretation doesn't allow for the other animals to get anything. So when we make an agreement, we need to make sure we're careful with whom we make the agreement. And we need to be careful about adding all the details of the agreement when we make it. Okay? So we don't only make an agreement, we agree on the details. The heifer, the goat, and the sheep made an agreement with a lion that they had no way to keep accountable to the agreement. And they made an agreement without adding the details beforehand. And when the time came to keep the agreement, the lion said, Bah. Right? Get out of here with your agreement. Or the lion could say, I did keep the agreement. I told you we would share it. And, I, and this is how I shared it. The lion gets one piece. That's fair, right? The strongest gets another piece. That's fair. The bravest gets a piece. But all the pieces went to the lion. So the other animals let the lion interpret the agreement. So be careful with whom you make agreements. And be careful that when you make the agreement, you agree on all the details beforehand. All right, we can say those are some moral lessons. Now, one thing that the animals could have done, let's think about what could the animals have done? The animals could have banded together and fought against the lion and made him keep the agreement, right? Or the, or the animals could have said, you know what, let's get five more animals in on this agreement. So if, if the lion tries to do anything We'll have like 10 other people and we can take hold of the lion and make him keep the agreement. Maybe three animals wouldn't be enough. You think a lion could kill a heifer, a goat, and a sheep all at the same time? Maybe, right? Most likely. So maybe having more people in the agreement would help keep the lion accountable, right? He might not be afraid of ripping off a heifer, a goat, and a sheep. But what if the heifer brought her dad? 
and the bull also signed the agreement. Right? What if the goat made sure to bring the buck or the billy goat and he also signed the agreement? And what if the sheep brought you know, her husband or the dad, the ram, right? And so the, the, the agreement was made between the lion, the bull, the buck, the ram. Then it might be different, right? The lion would know that he's going to have a fight on his hands if he tries to rip off the other animals. So you can see how the moral lesson teaches us how to think about agreements. Think about wh with whom you're making an agreement. Think about what the details are before you make the agreement. And also think about who's on your side in the agreement in case someone tries to do something tricky. And in, in our society, in modern life, we have the courts, right? If we make an agreement and you try to rip me off, I can take you to court. And so the idea of a government is that if someone does something wrong to you, the whole government is on your side, right? If you're in the street and someone attacks you in the street, the whole police force is on your side. And you can see how our society, how government can protect us. But sometimes the government can act like who? The lion, right? And then what do we do? What happens if the government chooses to act? What if the cop chooses to act like the lion, right? Or what if the cop joins the lion? Or the lion says to the cop, Psst, I'll give you a big piece if you join me, right? Like Darth Vader telling Luke to come join the dark side, you know? What happens if the good guy joins the bad? So these are the kinds of things that we have to think about when we make agreements. And this fable of the lion hunting with the other beasts gives us a lot to think about when we talk about agreements. So, okay, so the last thing we need to do for our class lesson, you need to make sure that you have the title of the class at the top of your notes. You need to make sure that you can write a paraphrase of the fable, tell the story in your own words. You're going to do that when we're done here. You need to make sure that you can identify the moral lesson of this fable. You got that? You need to explain why the characters are important that Aesop chose to use. And, that, and then talk about how this applies to your own life. Where do you actually make agreements like this? Maybe when you get a new toy or something like that, you get a birthday present, someone says, hey, can I, can I borrow your bike? Right? And your bike is really valuable to you, but what do they want it for? They want to ride it and jump it off a hill, right? And smash it into the ground to have fun. They're going to they're gonna use your bike because they, they want to have fun with it. If you ask, why don't you have a bike? Maybe it's because they've already had six bikes and they're all broken. So do you want to make an agreement about your bike with a kid who's got no bike? Probably not, you know? So be careful in your own life when you make agreements. Be careful with whom you make agreements. And if you do make agreements, make sure you agree on all the details and get other people on your side, right? So if you're going to make an agreement with another kid, Maybe it's good to get your parents involved so they know what the agreement was, right? Make sure his dad knows what the agreement was. Make sure your dad or your mom knows what the agreement was. So if he doesn't keep the agreement, you can call in some help or call in your other friends or call in your brothers and say, I made an agreement with this guy. He was allowed to borrow my bike for one hour and he took it home and he had it for three days. And someone can help you go get your bike, right? So think about agreements you make. Think about the people with whom you make agreements. Make sure you agree on all the details. And make sure you have a way of forcing the agreement to be kept. All right? All of that and a lot more. You can keep thinking about how it applies to your own life. This comes from Aesop's Fables, 
a fable of the lion hunting with the other beasts.